Hey guys, John Rettinger with John for Lakers here, and I've got a demo for you of the T-Mobile G1 done via an emulator on the T-Mobile site. This is an official emulator that T-Mobile has put out to show the features of Android and how it works in conjunction with their G1 handset. I'll put a link to the emulator in case you want to play with it up in the sidebar, but this is just a demonstration, not a review. I'll hold the review until I actually get a chance to play with the device. All right, guys, enjoy, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Here we have the emulator of the T-Mobile G1 running Android version 1.0. Now while this is running on a T-Mobile branded phone, this will give you a nice sense of what Android will look like when it comes to your service provider or whether or not you're looking to get a G1 yourself. So we're greeted right here with a simple home screen with a My Faves, which is a T-Mobile exclusive, email, dialer, contacts, browser, maps, and a big clock. And over here, we've got an arrow that if we click, we get a list to different applications and programs. We'll go through each of those shortly. Go ahead and click back. You can also take your finger and swipe over and be greeted with a simple Google search where you search and it launches the browser. Go back to the home screen here. On the device itself, down here, you've got a hang up button, which doesn't do anything here on this emulator. You've got a back button, which will take you back and lock the screen got your um, trackball here, which controls the motion of the device, home screen, which will take you home, and a dialer, which will take you to the dial pad. So the screen is locked right now. We'll press menu to unlock. And there we go. We're back at the home screen. So for those of you that are looking to get the G1, you'll notice the familiar My Faves. It's not functional here, since this is just an emulator. So we'll hit the home button to go back. You've got your email. You can see what the email looks like on the G1. Inbox, inbox drafts, you can scroll, spam, and trash. You can see what a new message looks like here. This is just a sample on the emulator, read the text, reply, and it is full HTML email. Let's go back to the home screen. Your dialer, use a keyboard to dial, so you use these buttons here to dial. And hit the green button to send. Also across the top, you've got four tabs, the dialer, your call log, where you can see what calls were missed or sent or received. Contact, you can scroll through your list of contacts, very similar to how you can on the iPhone. And a very familiar favorites, which is what the iPhone pioneered and replaced for speed dials. We'll go back to menu. Actually, go back to home, excuse me. Uh, so we just showed what the dialer looks like. And uh, there is a contacts yet again. The browser, not functional here, unfortunately, on the emulator, but you can see what the browser does sort of look like. It is a full HTML browser, a la the iPhone, and supposedly is very good. Uh, from the demos I've seen, it's a little bit choppy, not as smooth as the iPhone, but still is a very nice alternative. So we'll go back home here. Maps, screen's obviously not functional because, again, the emulator. But here you would have access to full Google Maps as well as Street View, which is something unique to the G1 right now. So if we hit that little arrow, it pulls up all the different features and functions that it has. It's got an alarm clock, very simple, which you can set. Open this back up here. The browser again, it's got a calculator, not functional, but it is a simple calculator. Your calendar, here's what the calendar looks like. Again, not functional. This will all be functional, of course, on your actual device. Camera, this is what you'd see when you want to take a picture. Go back. Contacts we saw, dialer we saw, email we saw. Now, one interesting thing about Android is that it syncs all your Gmail applications. There's no way to sync it from a computer to your device. It has to be all done through Google's proprietary Gmail services. So here's what Gmail will look like on there. There is a built-in IM application with obviously Google Talk, Windows Live Messenger, Yahoo Messenger, and AIM. This all comes standard. The maps we saw, Android Marketplace is similar to the App Store on the iPhone. You'll be able to view and browse a variety of applications without any filtering from Google uh, themselves. Anybody that writes an application can immediately have it up here. So you run the problem of possibly getting some malicious apps but also developers have a lot of freedom to create applications. Music, artist, albums, playlists, pretty simple. You can see what it would look like. Let's go back. Albums, what the albums would look like. If there was albums art, they would be visible right here. 
playlists, playlists like you're used to. Let's go back to the home screen here. There are a few more things to show you. This menu button right here, if you click, pulls up a five tabs menu across the bottom. You can add a contact or add an application or shortcut, folder, bookmark, contact, Gmail label. It's really where you go to add anything. You can see you can add widgets to the home screen, different clocks, picture frames, you can add wallpapers, and you would just browse through the pictures to where they were. Let's go back to the menu here. So you saw wallpaper, you can pick a wallpaper again. There's a separate button for that in the menu bar. You can search, just pulls up the Google search bar that you can scroll to with your finger. Notifications, it tells you if you have any notifications, if you have new emails, new voicemails and such. Let's go back. Actually move that right up, which is kind of neat. It's with your finger, you can flick that right up. And go to settings, and you can see all your different settings. You have your wireless controls, um, you know, your Wi-Fi settings, Bluetooth, Bluetooth settings, airplane mode, mobile networks. You can set for streaming networks and APNs. Call settings, voicemail, call forwarding, operator selection, all the things you'd expect in a mobile device, sound and display, ringtones, volume, ringers, audible touch tones, brightness, screen timeout, and the like. Data synchronization, you can choose what you want it to sync. Again, it does it with Google's proprietary system right now. I assume a desktop syncing client will be coming. Security and location, manage your applications, your SD card, date and time, text, and about the phone. Go back to the home screen here. With your finger, you can slide that across. And you go right back to your home screen here. This has just been a very quick demonstration of Google's G1 and the partnership with T-Mobile. I hope you guys have enjoyed a very quick walkthrough and to get a sense of what you will expect when the G1 officially launches later on this month. Personally, I'm going to withdraw or withhold my opinions until I get a chance to see the actual device. Uh, I am very impressed with the operating system so far, but it does seem very 1.0 to me. But I like to see what it looks like when the device is actually in hand. So guys, this is John Rettinger with John 4 Lakers with a real quick overview for you of the T-Mobile G1. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.